digital marketing by storm over the last decade. My name is Parker DeCover, owner of Prime Edge Media, a full service video marketing company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And since 2020, it's been my mission to help business owners across the nation harness the sheer power of video marketing. And the Camera Roll Chronicles is my attempt to supplement that with the industry's latest trends, as well as stories and lessons that we've learned from client projects and even special guests from adjacent industries. So without further ado, quiet on set please, and action. Jeff Bezos once said that if you're competitor focused, you have to wait until there's a competitor who is actually doing something. However, if you're customer focused, it allows you to be more pioneering. And today I am going to talk about the, I, I, I dare call it a fucking epidemic of people who are in the marketing space who are blatantly copying their competitors. Now, today I'm not going to be naming anybody. Um, and before you ask, no, nothing happened to Prime Edge, thankfully. Um, that isn't to say that it hasn't happened before, but um, today I'm not talking about my own situation, very fortunately. Um, you know, and if you are in business long enough, there comes a point where you're going to have people who want to copy you if you're doing something that looks worthy of copying, you know, and when you become the big fish in your pond, well, everybody wants to be you because they're just not that you cast such a big shadow on their agency and on what they're doing that they're irrelevant. You know, and this is why, like, we focus so hard on what makes you different as a business and as a way to get you in front of more people like yourself or more people that you actually want to work with, if those two are different. Um, you know, and there's there's a reason for that, because if we don't do that, then everyone looks the same and then no one has any fucking incentive to look toward you as opposed to someone else. Like it just, it's one of the most ignorant things I think I've ever seen in the business space is copying someone else. Um, because when you copy someone, you, you have pretty much given up your ability to think for yourself. You have now said, Hey, listen, this person is infinitely better than I am. So I'm no longer going to be a leader in my space. I'm going to be a follower. And I don't know about you, but I did not get into the business space and work my face off to this point to let someone else be better than me. And I think every good entrepreneur feels that way. You know, obviously we all want to be the best and we all think we're the best and whatever. But, you know, what that comes down to is we need to be confident because if we're not confident, no one else is going to cheer us on. It, it just doesn't happen. You know, we have to be our own cheerleaders, especially in the early days, you know, when we don't have an office of people around us to remind us the great things that we're doing. And we don't have clients constantly messaging us. Oh, my God, I got this result today. It's amazing you know, that, that we wish we could have every single day, but it's just unfortunately not the case. But when you copy someone, you don't get any of that because even when someone does acknowledge the fact that you did a good job, deep down, you know, it wasn't you who did the job. It was someone else. You know, and there are some of the biggest like copyright cases in business law. And it's surprising to me how many people haven't seen them. You know, like Apple versus Microsoft was probably one of the worst. Um, you know, and, and Microsoft still to this day is inferior, statistically speaking, to Apple. And I have a hunch that they always will be. Same with Starbucks and the obscenity group or uh, Obsidian Group, I'm reading that off here. Um, I don't even know who the fuck those people are. I know Starbucks, but I don't know the Obsidian Group. And I think there's a reason for that. 
you know, Whitmill and, uh, and Warner brothers, you know, again, we've, most of us have probably only heard of one of those organizations. So I want to give you some things to look out for, uh, now knowing that, okay, like, yes, this shitty thing, it's very common, you know, but as an entrepreneur, you know, and I'm not a marketer, what the hell do I do? So I want to give you some of my own tips on how to do that. Um, this is just my opinion. Um, and these are things that I have done to protect myself in the past and what I have uh, asked other people to do as well. And it's worked. Um, so nothing that I'm telling you today is not something that I haven't tried myself. Um, first of all, the obvious things. Take a look at the reviews. You know, if you have a, like, really, if you're hiring any business for a significant amount of money, you should be looking at their reviews because, it, well, and especially if it means your cash flow, because marketers like us as content marketers, we have control or, well, not really control, but we greatly affect your income. So it would, it wouldn't make any sense to go with a provider that you haven't researched before. So obviously do your dil, uh, due diligence, you know, look at their reviews if they have some one star reviews, go look at what they are and what they have to say. If it says anything about how they've, you know, oh, I've seen this template before, or they just used this same template that someone else used on another site, or I've seen that template before. Like I see this a lot in the website space. I've seen that template before in, you know, Canva or on, you know, Wix or whatever. Like I've seen that before and all they did was change the words. Sometimes they don't even change the words. Um, so really take a look at what the bad reviews say and take a look at how the owner responded as well. Because if it's complete bullshit play, because sometimes people just do that and they leave shitty reviews to get back at someone. Um, so obviously make sure that they're legit. Um, next thing that you can do is take a look at their case studies in their client list. If they share a lot of the same clientele as their competitors and their competitors are making more money than they are. That's a bit of a red flag, you know, just saying that, you know, yeah, not only do you have the same people that are giving you money, but you also make less money and you provide the same service as these people over here. And you said the same, or in that those people said the exact same thing about you that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And you got to take a look at who's existed longer and how long the OG has been out versus the sequel. Um, next is checking out how long they've been around. Um, if you have a suspicion that someone may be copying a competitor, take a look at how long that competitor has been around. Chances are if they're, or if you're correct, um, they have been around significantly longer than the person that you're looking at. Um, another thing is ask around. You know, I like, I cannot suggest that enough because the reputation of a business means more than anything and really should mean more than anything to all business owners because your name is your income. Like your reputation is directly proportionate to how much money you make and how much money you have to feed yourself and your children and keep yourself safe. So ask around, see who has a solid reputation. And I do agree that, you know, yeah, some people can bounce back from some bullshit and whatever. And we've even worked with some people who have and have completely turned their lives around, you know, but I also, and this is selfish. I would just prefer to work with someone who has a proven track record, you know, but that's just me. You know, if you're, if you're willing to give second chances and there's no writing on the wall and you're, you know, you're confident in what you've heard from other people in the research that you've done, by all means, go ahead. But if there are red flags, I would look elsewhere. And last but not least, uh, this one is a bit of a controversial one. Um, so if you don't agree, that's okay, because it's my opinion. And we live in America, and I have the right to my opinion, and you have the right to yours. Um, but check out their LLC. And look at how many names they operate under. If they're operating under a lot of names, and I, I would say a lot of names would be anywhere from, you know, that, I don't know, just call it 10 and above. And take a look at how many DBAs they have. Take it, 
you know, take a look at how many um, assumed names they have. And by the way, all of this information is public. You just have to go to like Michigan.gov or, you know, your if you're not here, um, like your state government website, and you should be able to find it. Um, it's usually under their like licensing division for Michigan is Lara. So um, yeah, I would take a look at that and see like how many business names they have that they don't advertise because there have been a lot of cases in the past of people, you know, grossly overcharging or copying people or whatever that have used a lot of different LLCs or a lot of different DBAs under the same LLC so that they can't be traced back. Um, and, and I would also just look up the business and see if they have any pending lawsuits. Um, a, you know, any successful business is typically going to have some sort of legal issues in progress or a graveyard of them before. Um, you know, and, and we've had our own from people trying to steal from us and, um, you know, just rogue customers and things like that. Like Elon Musk has, uh, has said multiple times that at any given time, Tesla is under 100 plus open lawsuits because it just happens. But what's important here is to take a look at what the cases are and what they're being accused of. And also the results of previous court cases that they've been through and see how they settled. Because if they didn't really settle and, you know, they're like, they lost or they kind of came to a settlement, but they didn't make it out very well, maybe something to consider. So those are um, just my, my few tips. And the last thing I have to say to people that may be copying and watching this is I just want you to remember that one, like I said, you are a follower and that's all you will ever be. And you've chosen that by your actions. And as long as you copy, not only will you always be behind, but you will also never ever get to see your business live up to its full potential. Your business will only ever live up to an outdated secondary version of the person that you strive to be. So there's that. Um, I hope that helps. And um, if you are being copied right now as a marketer, first of all, take it as a compliment. Um, I know it's extremely tough to do so. And there's a lot of rage that goes on stealing someone's intellectual property. Um, that's, it's, it's not a easy thing to deal with, but we also have businesses to run and we have a bigger shadow to cast. So, because really the only way to beat a, a copycat outside the courtroom is to cast a bigger shadow that just shrinks them down into irrelevance. So, uh, with that, I hope you guys have a incredible rest of your day and we'll see you guys soon.